Hey guys, so, um, based on quite a few requests which I got actually, I decided that I am going to do a tutorial on how I approach a hyperrealism drawing, and I'm going to start by saying that, um, the initial line drawing, at least, anybody can do it. It's very possible, even if you haven't drawn before, it's very possible for you to do it and all that you really need is um a guide and um a good eye for uh measurement so um i did a quick line drawing of uh one of my favorite people uh stephen hawking so um i'm just gonna play this video and show you how i approach this so, as you can see, what I did was I started off with this uh, grid drawing on the reference picture, and I replicated that grid drawing onto an empty blank canvas. Now, what I did, I made a mark. You can see right there that I made a mark. And what that mark is, um, right there, that is um, where the starting point of my line drawing is going to be. And that starting point is this pole right there where the um that part where uh stephen hawking's forehead intersects with this line and the, the intersection between the this vertical line and this horizontal line right there and the reason i chose that point is because it makes it easier to start off at a point anywhere in the drawing which intersects one of those points so i could also have started right there Sorry, I could have also started right there or right there, like any distinctive position where uh, a point on this picture intersects like, or starts off at an intersection at one of these grid lines. And it's a good idea to do that because then the measurements from that point becomes easier. And so, um, Continuing this video, I start off and I go ahead and just create a new layer on Photoshop so I don't interfere with the grid lines or the background layer. And what I'm doing right now is I am counting the squares. Like, it's very important to have these grids. And let me also say, like, it's not necessary to create this many small squares. Like, this is something that's useful for, um, beginners if you've never um, actually sketched anything before it's a good idea to have more and smaller size squares so you have more precision in where your lines are going but um, as you continue to do this I would recommend that you move away from the small squares and uh, move on to a, you know bigger squares for your guides and eventually uh, not requiring any squares at all and yeah so uh, continuing this video what I'm doing there is uh, counting the squares what I did was like from the edge of the, um, like I'll show you on the navigator right here um, what I did was there's I counted the squares from the top right uh, when compared to the top right of uh, this uh, reference picture on the same grid from the top right I counted seven squares and I started off at that intersection right there like at the bottom left of the seventh square starting from the top right so that would this right here is the seventh square and this right here is um, the bottom left corner of it so that's the starting point that I chose and from there what I'm going to do is as you can see in the video, I just start sketching. Now what I'm doing is, I'm not actually looking at the shape of, um, I'm not actually looking at the shape of his uh, features. What I'm looking at is the skin line, not the hairline, um, or not the hair, but the hairline on the side right here. So starting from this point, this is the line, uh, This right here is a line that I'm following. And so to do that, um, what I have to do is not actually try to copy the picture, 
but see where that line intersects the grid. So I started off at this point, and I can see that the next part on that hairline intersects right about there, and then it intersects right about there, and then it intersects here, here, and here. So what I'm doing is I make a note of where it intersects those lines, and all I do is connect the dots. So as you can see, like I didn't actually mark at the points in the grid. Like it's not necessary for you to do that, but then sometimes, it, like especially if you're just starting off, uh, it helps a lot. And I can say that for my first picture, that is what I did when I first attempted hyperrealism. Um, that is what I did. I found all the intersecting points on the grid and I just connected the dots. And I just continued that process. And another thing that um, I should say is pay very, very careful attention, especially when you're using a reference picture like this, pay very, very careful attention to which line it is you're actually trying to draw. So right here, you can see that I'm drawing the rim of the glasses. So this is what I'm drawing right here. But um, I'm not just looking at the rim of the glasses. I'm what I'm paying attention to is the outer rim. You can see like the rim of these glasses. It's actually if you're drawing it out, it's two lines to actually get the frame, the outer part and the inner part. The one that I am drawing right now or the one that I should be drawing right now is the outer one, like the outside of the frame. And then you have the inside of the frame right there. The one I'm drawing is the outside. And uh, as we move uh, further along the drawing, I can show you that um, those lines are, or the distinction between which line you want to draw gets tougher to keep track of, especially when you're not dealing with uh, especially when you are dealing with skin textures, especially you have to pay careful careful attention To which line it is you're drawing. So as you can see I start off with this um, The skin draw um, I finished drawing that uh, Glass the glass room right there and now I'm moving on and I'll just skip forward a little bit into the drawing So as you can see finishing up that one now I started up on his hair and you can see that I'm pretty much following the exact same principle that I have been following along, which is see where these lines intersect, where the lines of the reference pic uh, picture intersects the line of the grid. And that's exactly what I've been doing. And it's very, very important to make sure that um, the grid that you have on the reference picture is the exact same grid that you have on the blank canvas that you're using. And um, in this video, like I am using Photoshop, but this method can be applied to any medium, whether you're copying a reference off a computer and you want to draw on an actual paper with a pencil, um, this technique will work like that as well, but you have to make sure that when you're drawing the grid on the paper, um, you're very, very meticulous with the measurements of uh, the lines that you're drawing. Like you wanna make sure they're very evenly spaced. And this technique is also useful if you wanna scale the references. Like you could have the exact same grid, but um, if you wanna transfer this to say a bigger medium, like from a small medium, like the reference picture is actually very small, but you want to transfer with the uh, correct proportions onto a um, onto a bigger canvas. Let's say, like if you want to create a big painting and you want to transfer it onto a big canvas, it is possible if you have the exact same grid measurements. Like, and by measurements, I'm not talking about units. I'm talking about um, squares. Like. Vertically and horizontally, you want to have the same number of squares. So uh, that's what um, that can help with as well. And there are pros and cons to doing it this way, as opposed to just 
creating a regular sketch using um, the Riley's method, which is just, you know, um, I'll pause this video and I'll just open a new project and I'll show you what that is. Riley's method is basically um, without using any grids, like I'll turn the grid off on this picture right here. The Riley's method. So if I want to draw the same thing on a blank canvas without using any grid. So what I would start off by doing is getting the general, oops. What I do is I'd start off by getting the general frame of his head and get the general angle. And that's pretty much like that. And then what I do is I would uh, draw the reference lines. So this is approximately the midline of his face. This is approximately his, the level of his eyes. And I have used this uh, method quite often, but I haven't had that much practice using this method, so I'm not too accurate with it, but I do get pretty close with it. So like say that's approximately where his eyebrow is, and this is approximately the angle of his nose, and basically you get the idea. So that is the Riley's method to um, drawing the head. and. The pros and cons for um, both of these methods. Sorry, one second. I'll just um, yeah. So the pros and cons of both of these methods. If you want to do it the Riley's method way, it will happen a lot quicker like we're talking almost an hour quicker but if we're talking accuracy if you're really good you can get it pretty accurate like if you're looking at the reference picture and you use the Riley's method to um, duplicate it if you have a lot of experience and you're you know a seasoned artist you can get it approximately to I would say as far as 85 to 90% accurate. Um, so yeah, that's the advantage of um, the Riley's method. But then if you want to do it, this um, I'm not really sure what this method is called. I, you could call it the grid method or the hyperrealism method where you actually use the grid lines. This will take much longer, which is the con. This will, depending on how... Um, depending on your dexterity and how comfortable you are using this method, this can take anywhere from one and a half to two hours. And if you've been doing it for quite some time, this, you know, you might even bring it down to 15 minutes to an hour. But the pros for this method is this will be about max, like, well, if you're doing it this way, like the max accuracy you can get is like 98% and the minimum accuracy you can get is like anywhere from like 93 to 95%. Like, even if you're scaling the picture that you're copying, you, like even the scaled version, it will be pretty accurate. Like it'll, the same kind of uh, percentage that I'm talking about, it'll be that accurate even if you're scaling the drawing from um, one medium to another. So, um... Yeah, uh, continue, uh, back to the video, you can see right here, what I'm drawing right now is um, this portion right here is what I started drawing right there, like that portion and then the neck. And this is another good example of what I'm talking about when it comes to, um, sorry. This is another good example when it comes to making sure you know exactly which line you are actually copying. Because um, when you're paid, uh, when you're copying skin, realistic skin has no lines. It has shadow edges, and as you can see in this part or even this part, it looks like a line when you at first glance, but when you zoom in, 
you will see it's not a lot obviously it's not a line it's a fold in the skin right there and when you try to duplicate that what you're duplicating is the edge of the shadow right there and over here it's you know very defined it's got a very clear-cut edge right there so that part that part might be very easy to duplicate but now look at this shadow right there that is not so straightforward that right there sorry let me skip uh, let me skip back a little bit so I can show you again yeah this shadow right there that is not a clear-cut line or if you want to look at it as a line that's a very thick line that you're looking at so what you might actually end up doing when you're duplicating that line is drawing two lines again which is you know drawing that edge of the shadow and then that ed edge of the shadow so yeah if you're doing this method that's i guess you could say that's another con because you have to be very very meticulous about which line you're copying and another con for this method actually is if you lose sight of which square you're in or if you lose sight of even a single measurement your entire picture will be thrown off if you continue without constantly making sure that you know you're keeping track of where you are it's happened to me before which is why i'm saying it's a pain in the ass to erase all of that and redo from the point you messed up at to correct that uh, mistake so this is not a method where you can kind of just zone out and just lose focus you have to constantly keep track of exactly where the lines are intersecting the grid and you have to keep going like that you have to just you know make sure you don't lose sight of where you are and you can see right here i'm doing the double lines because once again um i'm doing the double lines right there because right here these are very thick shadows like they can't exactly be taken as one line they when you're trying to sketch out realistic skin like this and again, I guess this, you can also say this is personal preference. This is what I prefer just to make sure that when I actually go on to the coloring stage of it, it makes it easy for me to color it in. So as a personal preference, I draw two lines and it's what I would recommend to anybody who is, you know, trying to get into this kind of sketching or hyper realistic sketching or whatever. You can draw one line. There's nothing wrong with that, but then it won't be as accurate if you draw two lines instead. So, um, yeah, and uh, I was saying another con is you have to, this is not something that you can lose focus. Uh, exactly, you have to keep track of what you're drawing at all times and you have to make sure that the lines are intersecting, the lines of the actual picture are intersecting the lines of the grid at almost exactly where they intersect on the reference picture and it's very easy to fall into the trap of losing sight of the grid and just copying the uh, lines of the picture you know like it's very easy to lose sight of that and if you're moving on to coloring or shading after the stage there's nothing wrong with losing sight of it because then you'll catch on to your mistake you're gonna get rid of these lines when you move on uh, to that stage anyway like when i finish after i finish this picture i have very little use for it five minutes is probably the most i will use this outline once i start the coloring process and then i just turn this outline layer off all i need these lines for is to make sure that my skin colors stay within the line and I know exactly where the shadows and the highlights go after that I just turn this off and I just move on to the rendering and the detailing but um, uh, if you're not someone who is very adept at shading or coloring and you just want to leave it as a line drawing and an accurate line drawing 
then it's probably a good idea to make sure you are as accurate as possible. So, um, yeah, I guess that is all I have to say about all I have to say in this tutorial. So if you want to see the uh, finished product, um, just skip forward in this video and then go back to Photoshop. Make this full screen and just zoom in a little bit. This right here is the finished outline of Stephen Hawking. And I will move on to coloring this now. Hope you found this video uh, informative and helpful and uh, happy drawing.